Hello there guys, Francis Square here and today we're going to be making a model kit diorama of the Battle of Thermopylae. Okay guys, so this is a 54mm resin kit from Castle Miniatures uh, depicting the Battle of Thermopylae, which was uh, ancient Greeks and uh, it was sculpted by Mr. Vladimir Danilov Now I've gone ahead and I've already reviewed this kit If you're interested in seeing the parts all up close and personal then there'll be a link to that in the description bar below but if you've already seen it or you don't really care about that uh, we're going to crack on with the build so we've already gone ahead and we've already looked through all the main key parts and I've segregated each character and his accessories in separate tubs so I don't get any parts mixed up so before I go ahead and I start on that uh, I contacted the client because this is a private commission and uh, I give him a few options for a base because he wanted this mountain on a base so I give him a few options but this was the option that he, uh, he decided to go for so before I go ahead and start cracking on with these I'm going to try and get, uh, get this base sorted out first so sit back and enjoy So what I did there was I uh, basically just eroded that down the side, shortened that down because it was, it would have, uh, if I tried to glue it, it would have been at an angle, which would have uh, made everything lean forward, which is uh, really not what you want. So, uh, so yeah, so I went ahead and added some scotch. Uh, scratch lines with uh, scalpel and I also did the same with this base as well that's basically for this step now which is we're going to epoxy resin the base uh, to the the resin base to the wooden base so just normal uh, epoxy resin glue part A part B equal measures mixed together and then uh, put it on there and then we have to clamp that in place and leave to dry Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that to dry. Three hours later. Okay guys, so that's nice and solid now. So uh, for the next part we need to go ahead and we need to add some more bulk around the sides. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to mix some uh, regular standard milliput. Uh, and then just apply it to the sides. Now before I go ahead and do that, now I did already go ahead and score this but with this being more intricate I'm going to add loads and loads of little tinier scratches just so the, the clay has something more to hold on to. Equal measures of part A and part B mixed together and then laid in place. So for the next part I've got some uh, random uh, jars of various sizes of uh, modelling rocks. So we've got the fine stuff and then we've got the slightly bigger stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push some of this into the, uh, into the milliput clay and then we'll leave it to dry. Ok 
Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that to dry. Six hours later. So for the next part, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it all a base coat of Flintstone Grey. Okay guys, so for the next part, seeing as this uh, base coat of uh, Flintstone Grey has dried, for the next stage I'm going to go in for black wash. So this is basically just watered down black acrylic, I'm going to go all the way over it and then I'm going to dab off the excess and, uh, and then that'll hopefully show up all the little details and nooks and crannies. Okay guys, so you can see there, that has helped highlight all the little dark areas which has helped bring out a lot of detail. So yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll leave this to dry. Okay guys, so now that that wash is dried, I'm going to go in with some uh, Flintstone Grey and I'm just going to give it a dry brush over the top of it just to get a little bit of that lightness back. Okay guys, as you can see there, that has uh, brought a lot of detail. Okay guys, so now that uh, that's been dry brushed, now we can go ahead with some black and we can recreate this base. So for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, go through each figure and I'm going to take away all the, uh, all the little unnecessary excess parts and then uh, file those seam lines down so hopefully we can get these guys ready for uh, Great Prime soon. So for the next part, now I need to go ahead and I need to give all these parts a grey prime but obviously I want to keep all the parts separate from each other so I don't mix anything up and I also want to spray them in a container so when I spray paint them the small little intricate parts don't blow away and get lost. So what I've got is I've got this which is like... Uh, I suppose it's supposed to be like uh, you create like little side dishes and you put them in segregated parts but uh, obviously we're going to use it for the Great Prime. So for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all these individual parts in each one and then we can give it a, a once over coat of Great Primer. So I'm going to start with 
with laying a basic flesh colour to all the flesh parts using the Humbrol number 61 and uh, what I'm going to do is, the reason why these uh, coffee stirrers are here is basically these are to divide the characters so I don't accidentally mix any parts up so uh, Spartan A is going to be here, uh, Spartan B here uh, you know Persian blah blah blah, you know, you get the idea So now that all the basic flesh colours have been uh, painted on, I'm going to go ahead with some uh, watercolours and uh, and basically add some shading and then wipe off the excess and then uh, hopefully we can then crack on with more of the base colours. Okay guys, so now that the shading's been done, from this point on I'm just going to crack on with the paintwork because if I take, keep stopping to explain what I'm doing, this will go on for a really long time. So sit back and enjoy and then uh, hopefully we can uh, get this finished. Okay guys, so now that all the main key parts have had uh, the base coat colours added, uh, for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them back in this uh, container, uh, keep all the parts segregated, and then uh, we can now start doing some of the really high detailed uh, paintwork. Okay guys, so while we wait for some of those other parts to dry, I might as well go in and do a little bit more detail on this base. So what I'm going to do is just use some uh, dark green and I'm going to dry brush in some of the little nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. 
Okay guys, so for the next part, I want to go ahead and add a little bit of moss. So in order to get that effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this stuff, which is uh, basically just uh, scenic grass scatter. And uh, I'm just going to add it in some of the little tiny little nooks and crannies. Uh, PVA glue down first, then sprinkle some of this on. Leave it to dry, and then later on we can add a little bit of gloss over it, and that gives it like a wet uh, moss look. So uh, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself there, so for the next part I'm going to PVA glue in some of the little nooks and crannies and then we're going to add some grass scatter. Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that to dry. Okay guys, so now that uh, the moss has uh, dried in place, I've gone ahead and I've brushed off the excess. Now I'm just going to go in with some uh, dry brush mushroom grey and I'm going to add some little highlights. Okay guys, so now that most of the key base colours are, uh, have been applied, we can go ahead and we can start super gluing some of the key parts together and then we can add some uh, weathering at uh, some point soon. Okay guys, so for the next part, now I need to get this spear into this hand here, but uh, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not, but uh, the inside of that hand is actually blocked off with uh, resin. So there's two options with this, now I can either cut this in half and then make it into two sections of so part A gets glued at the top and part B gets glued underneath. Now the problem with that is you might find that the top might go one way and the bottom might look the other way and then it'll look like a really warped weird spear. So it's actually structurally uh, more and more, more steady just keeping it as it is. But uh, the bad news is I need to carefully drill this resin out of this hand and uh, this could easily break, making all this detail here a nightmare to fix. So, yeah, uh, I've decided to go with uh, a really fine drill bit and uh, take me time and hopefully I can make it work. Okay, so I don't know if that's showing up now. So as you can see, there's no hole straight through. So hopefully this will now fit in place. OK 
Okay guys, I'm going to go in with a slightly thicker drill bit, but this time I'm only going to take the top part off, I'm not going to go all the way through. Okay guys, looks like I've got no choice but to actually go all the way through. Okay guys, this has proven a bit of a nightmare this bit. Okay guys, it eventually worked, but uh, unfortunately it's took uh, a bit of the uh, a bit of the paint work off there, so that'll have to be repainted. But for the most part, at least it's actually uh, it's on in there. So for the next part, I need to put this guy on the diorama and then glue his hand in position, and then uh, see how far this needs to be uh, took up. Okay guys, I'd say that was probably good enough, so what I'll do is I'll glue these parts into position, uh, the, the spear in the hand, and then, uh, and then we can crack on with uh, more details. Okay guys, so for the next part, now I've got these two stick-on uh, tattoo transfers that uh, I think will work really good uh, towards detail in these shields. So, in the last uh, in the last video, I tried this before with two, with two other decals, but it didn't work very well. So, originally these were like a red gold colour, and unfortunately the, uh, the water reacted badly with the gold, and I had to basically scrape it all off and start again so I've gone for a white undertone this time so hopefully this will uh, this will work Okay guys, that's uh, worked out really well for that one. So I'll put that to one side. Now this one might be a little bit more trickier with it being uh, a complete uh, circle. So yeah, let's we'll take our time and see how we get on. Okay guys, at first glance that worked out uh, rather nicely as well. 
So I'll leave these to dry. I might go ahead and add, a, add something else uh, sometime soon. So I'll have a look to see where else I've got. But for the most part, I'm happy with both of them. Okay guys, so I had a quick look through what other sticker transfers I had and I didn't have any others for the uh, the Greek uh, shields but I do have one that I think would work well for the Persian shield so I'm, I'm going to stick this on in place and then I'll be painting more details later on but I think this is probably a good uh, first uh, detail layer I suppose so uh, yes, let's crack on with that Okay guys, it uh, didn't go on completely perfect, but uh, I think it went on well enough to use. So it was this corner here. So what I can do is uh, I can probably work around it, like paint an outline around it or something to hide this bit. So for the most part, that, uh, that worked uh, really well. So I'll leave this to dry and then, uh, and then we'll contemplate the next part after that. So for the next part I'm going to go in with some metallic silver nail polish and I'm just going to do a little highlight to all the uh, all the silver metal parts just to give it that little bit more of a shine. So for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little few more colours and details to the various shields. So for the next part I'm going to go in with some uh, clear gloss varnish and I'm going to go over all the little grass scatter that will both help keep it in place and obviously it will give it a wet look to mimic moss. I think that'll uh, work lovely. Okay guys, so now that all the main uh, base colours have been applied and we're now starting to add all the detailing, uh, because I want these guys to look like they've actually uh, beat, they've seen a lot of action and they've, they're a bit on the uh, worn down side, I'm going to go in with some uh, black watercolour and, uh, and I'm just going to go over all the armour parts which will do two things. One, it'll give it more of a warm look, but it'll also get into all the little nooks and crannies. 
of the uh, of the belts and the lever and, uh, and stuff like that so it just gets across uh, a little bit more detail Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave all that to dry. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with a bit of black watercolour and I'm going to go over the free shields and then we're going to gently dab off the excess and then uh, that black will help highlight uh, some of the little nooks and crannies and uh, it'll just make it look a lot more better. Okay guys, so now that uh, that's been weathered, I'll go in with some uh, copper acrylic and a really uh, a really fine detailed brush and I'm just going to add some uh, some like where the gouges are, where they obviously seam battle, so that's just shown fresh uh, bronze. For the next bit I'm going to go in with a little bit of black acrylic and I'm just going to add a few little details to the outside. So for the next part I want to go in with a little bit of this stuff which is uh, static grass and uh, I just want to add a few little bits here and there just to give a little bit of a uh, look of a, like an overgrown uh, area I suppose. Just has a little bit more detail. So I'm just going to apply some uh, little bit of PVA glue in a few little key places and I'm just going to sprinkle some of the grass scatter on top.
Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that to dry and then once dry, I'll br gently brush off the excess. Okay guys, I'm going to go in for a little bit of black from the airbrush under the base. Okay guys, I think that'll work nicely. So for the next part we'll go over with one more dry brush of a lighter grey. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to super glue some of the extra parts uh, now that they're painted, like the shield and the uh, swords etc. Okay guys, so I think all the main side bits are done now, so for the next part we'll go ahead and we'll uh, start building it all up on the actual base. Okay guys, I'm uh, going to leave the, all that to dry and then I'm going to go in and add a few little tiny little touch up details but for the most part I think it's finished. Okay guys, I'm going to go in with a matte varnish and uh, I'm just going to give it a quick once over just to protect the paint job. Okay guys, we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry.
Okay guys, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say this one's all wrapped up now and done. So I've had a blast making this. If you've enjoyed the video, please smash that like button and share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find the YouTube channel which I'm always appreciative of. Thank you for your help. If you have any comments, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future builds. So once again, I'm Francis Gray and this is the Battle of Thermopylae diorama in 54mm. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.